Thank you, Jody. Happy Easter, everyone. Um, Jodie's bright and cheerful today, not only in terms of a yellow top, but also what she's carrying in her spirit, which is amazing. And I got a lot of people ribbing me this morning because apparently I don't look bright enough in terms of my shirt. Um, I'm not going to worry about that, though, because the brightness of the glory of God and the power of the Holy Spirit is radiating out of me this morning. So be ready to receive from God today. Now, over our Easter series, we've called it How Sweet the Sound, uh, taken of course, those lyrics from the song Amazing Grace uh, that we sang earlier, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. And uh, Jody said a little bit last week about the story of John Newton, who wrote that song. And actually, he was a really objectionable character before he met Jesus. In fact, a real tear away and not the kind of person that anybody would particularly want to be with or was uh, fond or affectionate or, uh, towards. And yet, when he had an encounter with Jesus, something changed. And out of that transformation, he wrote that song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, um, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And I was really struck by the fact that he could write that in the 1700s, but the power of one encounter with a resurrected Jesus released something in his heart that has spoken through the generations. And 250 years later, the sound of that encounter is still speaking. And I wonder how many people have been impacted by the sound of that song over the last 250 years. Isn't it amazing, the power of God and the fact that God speaks and he still speaks. And so as we've been looking over the Easter story, we've been listening in to the sound from the different gospel accounts, but also we've been tuning in to what is God speaking today? If Jesus is alive, which he is, if the power of the Holy Spirit is at work, which he is, it is, then he's wanting to speak something to you today. He's wanting to speak something afresh to me. He's wanting to speak something fresh into our hearts and our lives. Because we're not just talking about a historic event. We're talking about a God who rose from the dead and is alive forevermore and is at work forevermore. And so last week, Jody was talking about the triumphal entry. One of the sounds was uh, as Jesus came into Jerusalem on a donkey, an unexpected way for a triumphant king to come, because Jesus came into Jerusalem as a suffering servant. But as he came into Jerusalem, so crowds uh, uh, flocked out to see him and to line the streets. And there was a sound of celebration, a sound of praise, as people recognized the Son of God had come near. And if you've never read the Gospels before, you really, really ought to read them. There's lots of amazing stories of Jesus, including the most unlikely people. There's lots of amazing stories of Jesus turning water into wine, feeding a crowd off five loaves and two fishes, healing people who had even died and uh, setting free uh, lepers, letting people not know the judgment of God, but the grace and the forgiveness of God. And you read the gospel stories and you see what God looks like in flesh and blood in the life of Jesus. And uh, when I read it, I just have to say, wow, wow. And that's what the crowd was uh, uh, responding to as Jesus was coming into Jerusalem and they were celebrating and welcoming him. And then if you tuned in to our Good Friday service, if you didn't, you can watch it on Catch Up on YouTube. But Jew Hodges did a fantastic job of talking us through the crucifixion story and the agony and the pain and the crowd, uh, how quickly crowds can turn. The crowd now rejecting and uh, speaking hostility and uh, judgment on Jesus and uh, uh, hurting him with their wounds, and then him being nailed on a cross, and his blood being shed, a spear going into his side, as he took, as he paid the price for everything that we've done wrong. How can we celebrate the way we do on an Easter s Sunday morning? We can celebrate because God sent his son, who was perfect in every way, and yet he was willing 
to let himself be arrested, yet he was willing to be scorned, yet he was willing to have the hatred of the world put upon him. Yes, he was willing to hang on a cross and not fight it, to take the judgment that we deserved, to take the punishment that we deserved, to take it on himself and into himself. And then three days later, to be risen from the dead, to rise up victorious so he could speak, you can have a new start. You can have a new life. You can be forgiven. The chains of sin and sickness can be broken over your life. You can have a new start. And that's the reality of the Easter story. And you know, that still speaks. So today we're going to be looking at the sound of resurrection. What does the resurrection story mean for us? And what is God wanting to speak to us today? And like I said earlier, God is still at work. God is still speaking. Um, When you read the Bible, the whole creation of the world started off with God speaking a word. Let there be light. And things started to come into being. I've been reading a lot of the Old Testament recently. I've been reading a a Jewish rabbi uh, take me through the Torah. But in the book of Deuteronomy, where Moses is giving instruction to God's people about how they should live to be able to enter into the promised land, 92 times in the book of Deuteronomy, Moses speaks and he says to God's people, listen, can you hear what God is saying? In the New Testament, when Jesus comes from heaven to earth, John says Jesus comes as the word of God made flesh to describe, to show us, to speak what God really, really looks like. And Jesus says a number of times to disciples, he says to he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. And right at the start of this talk, I will talk a little bit from the the Gospels and the resurrection story in a minute, but right at the very beginning, I just want to say, what is God speaking to you this morning? What is God speaking to us this morning? I just want to stop for a moment and I want to invite the Holy Spirit to come. Maybe you want to put down whatever you're uh, fiddling with or uh, doing at the moment. Just sit in silence and why don't we ask God just to come and speak to us. What is the God who knows you, who knit you together in your mother's womb? What is that? The God who knows the number of hairs on your head. The God who loves you passionately. What's he wanting to speak into your life today? Let's just take a moment and as we sit in silence, let's invite God to come and speak. And for some of us, we might get a picture that appears in our mind. We might hear like a whisper in our ears. We might feel something in our hearts. We might feel God just wrapping his loving arms around us. Let's just take a moment in quiet and let's hear what God's wanting to speak today. And if you feel that God's saying something that would be helpful for the church to hear or encouraging for us to hear, why don't you type that now into the chat stream? There's a chat stream option on YouTube if you're not watching it on your telly, if you're watching it on a computer uh, or a tablet. There's a live stream on the Restore website and there's an option to chat there. If you feel that God's speaking something for us today, I've got an iPad so I can see it. Why don't you type it in? Why don't you say it? What's God speaking to us today? I had two pictures. Um, One was a picture of flowers beginning to grow. And I I feel like God's saying that he's changing the season. And there's new flowers, there's new beauty that we're going to start to see springing up. And I know the last season, the last year, has been incredibly hard in lots of ways. And in some ways, it feels like there's been more death around, both physically out of COVID, but also things that we 
normally would be able to celebrate. It's like we've not been able to. It's like they've died in some way and been dropped away. But I felt that Jesus was saying that there's going to be new growth that is going to come. There's, there's new, I can see green shoots start to spring up. I think uh, some of that speaks hope. Some of that speaks of dreams that maybe we'd given up on or had felt died that God's going to bring to life again. So there's something about new growth, new life, new shoots that are going to begin to spring up. And the uh, second picture I had was, was like of a tomb. We're celebrating uh, that Jesus uh, broke out of the tomb this morning. Um, but I could see someone and they were sitting like, like they were entombed. And it was like they were trapped. And, uh, and I wondered whether some of it is, is to do with someone that's been struggling with depression and despair and a sense of hopelessness. Um, but then I saw the, st- the, the stone or the door that was trapping them. And it's like God moved and the stone shifted and light started to shine in. And I just feel for at least one person watching this morning, you've been struggling under despair. You felt trapped. You felt like maybe there'll be no recovery from this. And I just want to say the stone has shifted and light is beginning to shine in. And so receive that in terms of God speaking today. I'm going to look and see if any, see what other people have put in, see what's come in. Harry Carter, yeah, whatever your situation right now, there is cause to celebrate because what Jesus has done for us, be joyful. Sometimes it's a choice, isn't it, to step into the truth of what Jesus has done. Let's step in, let's make a choice this morning to step into the joy of Jesus, to step into the love of Jesus. Are there places you want to see God's resurrection in? Um, There's dead places that you need flowers to grow in. And an invitation from from Alison, just a sense that this morning we need to give to Jesus those dead places. We need to surrender those things. And as we surrender them to him, so his love and his light kind of waters them. And then the new growth starts to begin. So this morning, maybe for some of us, we've got to surrender our griefs and our sorrows. And the things that we've struggled with, rather than holding them on to ourselves, we've got to bring them out into Jesus' presence. And let his light, let his love, let his truth um, pour into them. Kirsten, God's saying now, plant new seeds. You know, in, in, in the New Testament, seeds represent the word of God. And so the things that God has spoken to you, sow them now. So that means start praying them, start saying, God, you've given me this word. God, I'm going to ask you now to start fulfilling this word. I'm going to believe, God, you're going to fulfill this word. So it's an invitation to take hold of the things that God has promised us, the truths he's spoken in the past, and begin to pick them up and start praying into them again. Stuart's got a picture of an onion being sliced and broken down into smaller pieces. How many people cry when they uh, 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 chop an onion? Um, Things don't... I don't find it, uh, my tear ducts, there's always been a problem with my tear ducts, so they never quite work properly, so I, I never actually cry literal tears, but the closest I get to it is peeling onions. There you go, if you want to pray healing for me, I could, maybe I should get Jodie to pray for me, because she has no problem, she cries when she's happy, she cries when she's sad, she cries when anything happens really. Anyway, um, anyway, the picture of an onion being sliced and broken down into smaller pieces, this allowed it to bring its flavour out and fulfil its destiny that it wouldn't have been able to if it stayed whole. I think there's something really deep and significant in that. Um, We don't like the process of being broken, but sometimes we need to be broken for the depths of who we are to really get opened up to the reality of who Jesus is. And then as we get broken or cut down in the very depths of who we are, it's like God can reach in to the the deep things and bring his transformation right from the very core, right from the very foundations of our being. If you've been broken over this last year, we worship Isaiah 61, the, the God who can bring beauty out of brokenness. So again, surrender the brokenness, surrender the pain, Just like Jesus surrendered on the cross, because out of that, God was able to bring resurrection and new life. 
Uh, there's loads more words on the live stream. Might pick up on some a little bit later, but I do want to share some things that I felt that God was particularly speaking today. And uh, uh, we're going to take it from uh, Matthew's account of the cross and the resurrection, which Mookie read so wonderfully earlier. And uh, then Alex as well. Didn't the choir sound amazing today? Do you know, when you come in the studio, you can't hear all the uh, music. All you can hear is the voices. And it was like a heavenly host of angels just worshipping Jesus. So, so beautiful, so amazing. Um, in the Matthew's account, um, in Matthew 27, there's three sounds that come at the end of the cross, and the story of the cross. Uh, and they're these three verses, carry the three sounds. Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. The veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Then the earth shook and the rocks were split. And just taking something that God's speaking, I think, out, out of those three sounds. Um, firstly, there was Jesus crying with a loud voice. Do you know, when Jesus died on the cross, it wasn't like life gradually ebbed out of him and he kind of wilted and then just gave up. Actually, as he was taking the punishment for everything we've done wrong, as the, uh, it says the sky went dark for, for three hours because the whole darkness and the depravity of, of human existence, of my heart, of your heart, of my life and your life, it's like Jesus was absorbing it all on himself. And when the last bit of darkness came to rest upon Jesus, when he experienced separation from God, my God, my God, uh, why have you forsaken me? When the last bit fell on Jesus, Jesus knew the job was done. He knew the task was complete. In John's gospel, he shouts out, it is finished. And with a loud shout, he declares the power of sin, the price has been paid. And transformation is going to come. And in the temple, uh, they used to, uh, when you went to worship in the, in the temple, there were places you could go to, the places you couldn't go to because they were too holy for you to be able to go to. There were places the ordinary people could go to, but they couldn't go into the very holy of holies where God dwelt. There was places the priests could go into that were a little bit further than the ordinary people could go to. And then on one day, one time in the year, the high priest could go into the holy place, the very place where God dwelt. And what separated the holy place from all the other places in, in the temple, all the other parts in the temple, was a, was a curtain. And when Jesus pays the price and shouts out, it is finished, the temple curtain rips from top to bottom. Can you hear a ripping away of everything that would keep you from the presence of God? And often people talk about that and they say the temple curtain was torn so that we could go into the presence of God. I like to see it the other way. The temple curtain was ripped from top to bottom so God could come out and meet us in our kitchen, in our bedroom, in our living room, in our everyday life. The God who is everywhere could be somewhere and be right here with me, because God was breaking out. The presence of God was breaking out. And then in Matthew's gospel, it says, the earth shook and the rocks were split. Actually, it's, it, it's a little bit of a scary bit, actually, because it talks about the rocks uh, splitting, the earth shaking. And then it says, dead people came back to life and started to appear in Jerusalem. It's a little bit freaky, a bit like a Stephen King book as opposed to the Bible. But it's because something is changing in the core of human existence in the very fabric of the earth, something is shifting. And when we move on to the resurrection story in uh, Matthew 28, verse 1, it says, Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, do you hear the echoes of the creation story? When in seven days in one week, there was a new beginning. Some people argue, was it literal days? Wasn't it literal days? I don't think it can be literal days because the sun and the moon didn't happen until day four. It's quite hard to have three days without the sun and the moon. I think it's seven phases of creation. But the pattern is a week and there's a new beginning. And now in the New Testament, after Jesus has paid the price for us, the Sabbath has gone. The old week is ended. A new day is dawned. 
because God is recreating something. And when we listen in to the sound of resurrection, what in Matthew's gospel comes out is the sound of an earthquake. In fact, three times in the story of the cross and the resurrection, Matthew talks about the fact there was an earthquake. And in 28 verses 2 and 3, behold, a severe earthquake had occurred. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. Some people say, who rolled away the stone? God did. Because he shook the earth. And there was an earthquake. Why? Because something was being rewritten at the very core of how this world works. Uh, And it changed even the very fabric of this world. Now, I'm not a great scientist. Um, I get most of my science information from Wikipedia, so that's probably quite dangerous, really. Um, Or certainly off Google. Let me tell you how an earthquake happens. An earthquake happens because there's a build-up of pressure in the Earth's core. And as that pressure builds in the Earth's cores, it finds a fault line, it finds a gap, and then that pressure breaks through the gap. And as it breaks through the gap, so the Earth shakes. Jesus took all of our sin, all of, his si- all of our sickness, everything we've done wrong, he took it into himself on the cross. In 1 Peter chapter 3, it then talks about the fact that he went under the earth and he proclaimed to the prisoners in hell under the earth, at the very core of the earth. But the power and the pressure of the victory of Jesus, the power and the pressure of the it is finished to the cross, built up in the core of the earth. And then on Easter Sunday, it had to find its way out. And there was an explosion that shook the earth and that moved the stone that uh, trapped in the body of Jesus. And out of that resurrection life broke out. And a little bit about the story of earthquakes. But when an earthquake happens, the result is the seismic waves that blast out from the epicenter. And those seismic waves are what creates the tremors that break out. And from the resurrection story, as Jesus dealt with all of our sin, all of our darkness, all of our failure, all of our guilt, all of our shame, as Jesus dealt with it all, so the pressure built up. And then the earth gave way to a new beginning and seismic waves of God's forgiveness broke out. Seismic waves of God's healing broke out. Seismic waves of God's freedom broke out. Seismic waves of God's deliverance broke out. Seismic waves of God's hope broke out. Seismic waves of the life and the love of God broke out. And those seismic waves have been flooding across the earth ever since. And I love the fact that when God's resurrection life broke out, did did you notice, have you noticed in the story of the cross and the resurrection how well the women do? In the time of Jesus, women were second-class citizens. Do you know, the, uh, the word of a woman wasn't allowed to be offered as a witness in a court of law. And yet it's the women that stay at the cross And the first two women who witness resurrection are the ones who first go and tell the men to wake up to the fact that Jesus is alive. And part of the seismic wave that comes out of the resurrection is a seismic wave that brings transformation. And those that have been downtrodden, those that have been rejected those that have felt that they've been worthless, those that have felt that they've had no one care about them or come alongside them. Jesus' resurrection power is turning that on on its head and they're the first to enter into the kingdom of God. They're the first to encounter the resurrected love and power of Jesus. They're the first to experience that transformation and it flows from the women to the men to the disciples and then there's the Great Commission, all um, authority in heaven and earth is given to me now go and in Matthew's account of it it talks about the signs the resurrection power that we as God's church are called to carry in Mark 16 verses 17 to 18 it says these signs will accompany those who believe in my name they will cast out demons seismic wave 
of victory over the demonic. They'll speak with new tongues, seismic waves of the power of the Holy Spirit filling people. They'll pick up serpents, and if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Seismic waves of the power of God. This morning, what I felt that Jesus wanted to do was loose seismic waves of his resurrection power across the church. I believe it's no coincidence that it's Resurrection Sunday that the church is beginning to regather again in this land. Because God wants us to regather in a new way. We're not going back to what was. We're embracing a new way of living in resurrection power. And over, over this last year, I think God's broken some things in our lives. And maybe broken some things about how we do church. Now he's wanting to release seismic waves of resurrection power and make us the hope carriers, the hope bringers. Those who can bring healing and restoration to others. Can you hear it? Can you hear the wind of the Spirit starting to blow? Can you feel tremors as the earth starts to shake? Can you, can you see it with your mind's eye? Can you sense it in your heart? Jesus is bringing us to a new day with new hope. Fresh power for a new beginning. Maybe you've tuned in today, never really encountered the real truth of the Easter story. Maybe today Jesus is saying, I died for you. I took the pain and the punishment for what you've done wrong. Today you can be set free from it. Maybe for other ones of us, we're sitting in our living rooms, maybe in our slippers, maybe in our pyjamas, but spiritually we're wearing chains. Chains of sickness, chains of hopelessness. Let the seismic wave of God's resurrection power break those chains. Break the power of that sickness. I'm going to pray, and as I pray, let's invite the seismic waves of God's love and resurrection power to flow over you. And, and you know, a seismic wave can, from God can be really gentle. You don't have to hype yourself up. You don't have to work yourself up. Just sit there, open up, and receive the seismic wave of what God's wanting to do in your heart, in your life, your family, by the power of his spirit. Let's pray. Jesus, I thank you that you are all mighty, that you are all powerful. And thank you, Jesus, that you broke the power of sin. You broke the power of shame. You broke the power of sickness. You broke us free from every demonic bondage. And this morning, as we worship you, as we lift you up, we choose to put those things under our feet. And we pray that the resurrection, the seismic wave of the resurrection power of God, we pray, let that be loosed into every home, into every life. Let the sound of resurrection, let the sound of new breath, let the sound of new life, let it be loosed across the life of Restore right now. And Lord, we choose in these moments, we choose to drink in, to soak in your resurrection power and your resurrection hope and your resurrection life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, the worship team have come back. They're going to uh, start to sing and lead us in worship. But why don't you just use this time to let the seismic waves of God's hope, of God's healing, of God's love, why don't you let those seismic waves just flow over you and flow over you and flow over you and bring what was dead back to life.